Today, we're joined by SJSU alumni and faculty, Kanak Somani, who's going to discuss how studying anthropology prepared her to become a teacher and practitioner. So excited to have our conversation today. Before we get into today's topic, I was wondering if you can just uh, share a little bit about you and your background with our viewers so they can learn more about you and how you got to where you are today. So what are a few of the significant moments that shaped who you are and led you to teach at SJSU and with SJSU online? Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me here. Um, so I actually am from India. I was born and brought up in India and I came to San Jose, um, San Jose State for my undergrad when I was 18 years old in about 2012. Um, I actually didn't start off with anthropology. I always did want to do archaeology, but I, for some reason, thought that history was the route to get into archaeology. When I came here, I realized it was different. So I started off with a history major, and then I added on anthropology major as well, and I concentrated on archaeology, though I had, you know, I liked all the subfields of anthropology. I enjoyed it immensely. I actually ended up liking it a lot more than history um, itself. But I think those two majors did work together. Um, I've always had a passion for um, ancient, you know, civilizations, ancient languages. Um, grew up in India, which I think retains a lot of its, you know, ancient culture. Still, we still follow a lot of traditions that are, you know, from very, very old times. Um, my ancestral home is actually a very old. Um, it's called a Haveli in in you know in Hindi, but it's kind of like a. Um, I wouldn't say mansion, but it's like a very old courtyard style home with a bunch of rooms, um, which is common for, you know, that period of India. So I grew up in that ancestral home. Uh, we went there on all our vacations, even though we lived in the city. Um, and I think that really got me really interested in, you know, old things to be very colloquial about it. Um, and then, you know, I started with an anthropology major, we ended, up, ended up getting a master's degree in archaeology. Um, from Yale, I worked in CRM, which is cultural resource management for a bit in the Bay Area, um, monitoring excavation projects, you know, analyzing artifacts, doing all that, working with the um, CRM laws, working with NAGPRA laws. Um, and then, you know, I just, I was a little bored, I would say. Um, I wanted a change. Um, I wanted something more exciting. Um, I just happened to email Roberto, our chair, and he was like, oh, you know, I have a position for you. And I was like, you know what? I will take it. I want to do this. So yeah, that's how I got into teaching. And I don't think I've had this much fun in a long time. It's been great. Um, realizing I have a natural passion for it. Um, yeah, I guess I like talking about what I'm passionate about and that's what I'm doing with my students. Um, and I wouldn't say just, you know, I don't think it fell into my lap. It just was a very natural progression with my career. And I'm really thoroughly enjoying it. Um, it's like talking to my students about stuff that I enjoy, stuff that's my passion. So it's coming very easy. Um, treating my lectures like a conversation, giving them as much information and trying to get them as interested as I am in what I do and what I study. So it's been fun. That is how I've got to teaching right now. Awesome. That's such a great story. It's you know, really great to hear just a little bit more about your background, your upbringing, um, and just kind of how that upbringing really shaped and informed uh, where you saw yourself going initially, you know, as you were thinking about going into higher education and what you wanted to study. And I like, actually, I was noticing this parallel between when you were at that juncture, you know, you kind of had this maybe perception or impression of like what you wanted to study or what you thought, you know, that meant, but then you ended up kind of changing that over time as you shifted more into anthropology and archaeology. And then similarly, like when you went into um, like post-secondary and you graduated, you, you know, you initially uh, kind of had this maybe initial career trajectory in mind. But now, like you said, you've now transitioned into teaching and something you found a lot of joy. in. so I think that's just a, a really great story. It just goes to highlight like how you never know how things are going to play out. Right. Like you, yeah, maybe, you know, we have these kind story. of. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a good transition actually into our um, our first question for our topic for today. So you did mention that you graduated from SJSU. So not only are you a faculty member here, but you're also an alumni who's gone through the program. And I was wondering if you can discuss how, as a student, how that experience shaped your worldview and your trajectory that you saw for yourself. Yeah, of course. Um, so this is, you know, campus, SJSU campus was my first home um, after living in India for 18 years and moving to a different country at the age of 18, which 
you know, is an adult, but you're just fresh out of high school. You've lived with your parents your whole life. Um, moving countries was, you know, I wouldn't say it was a cultural shock, but it was such a big change to move countries. Um, I had, you know, I have an accent, right? Like I, I speak fluent English, but I have an accent. So um, there's a lot of times that I have to repeat words, but SJSU was just such a diverse campus had so many amazing people, not in, just in terms of, you know, the friends that I made that are my lifelong friends, but it was my first home. Um, I enjoyed every single one of the classes I took. The faculty in all departments, especially in the anthropology department, have been amazing. They've been, you know, my mentors for my entire life. Um, I've made friends there that are also faculty. And it's just, it's been it really sh shaped me. It shaped me as a very young person who was moving here. It shaped my worldview. Um, it was my first home, like I said. Like I will still consider it home. And coming back to campus has felt like I've come back home. It's so familiar. Um, it gave me so many opportunities, so much potential for growth. Um, you know, I was able to expand. I met my husband there, which obviously has helped me. You know, that that made me my you know life here. Um, we've made a life here together. Um, so yeah, it's really, I really think that it shaped my upbringing because I was still very much growing up when I came to the country. Um, I really think I was still a child at 18. So it's really helped me grow as a person. It's given me a lot of opportunities that I don't think I would have gotten if I'd gone elsewhere, really. Um, and it's such an urban campus, right? We have so many things around it. It gives you, the, it gives you that safety of being in a campus. Um, that mentorship from your faculty, the, the friendships you made, but it also exposes you to the city. Um, so it really prepares you for a world outside of college as well. You know, the real world as a college, though I think college is a very real world as well. Um, so yeah, I really think SJSU as a campus, it's academic programs, it's faculty, the people, the diversity, really like it raised me, I would say. I hope this answers your question, but yeah, I grew up. Yeah. This is my home. Yeah, I mean, no, you definitely answered the question. It, it, I mean, it's just so great to hear how you, you use that word home so many times in, in describing your experience mm -hmm. and your relationship to SJSU and what that's meant to you um, in your life just as you've become, um, you know, become an adult, become, you know, a working professional, like establish your life, establish mm -hmm. your roots, all those sorts of things. And, you know, I, I think similarly, you know, even though SJSU online is 100% online experience for our students and a lot of the classes are asynchronous, we, we do want to think about creating that a similar sense of like connection and belonging for our online students as well, making sure that they have opportunities to connect with faculty, connect with students, connect with campus resources, um, opportunities. And I really like that you highlighted uh, just shine the spotlight on the overall level of diversity that SJSU has to offer in terms of uh, what walks of life people are coming in from. We've noticed similarly, you know, already in SJSU online people are coming in from all different walks of life in terms of like their ages, their professional experiences, their backgrounds, what they're hoping to get out of the program, their perspectives. So it makes for a really rich experience, uh, we think, you know, in terms of what students are experiencing. And I imagine for you, you're probably taking some of that experience that you had as a student and then, you know, bringing that into the classroom now that you're on the other end as a faculty member. And I think that's a good transition into our second question. You're teaching the course Historical Archaeology. And I was wondering first if you can just provide a general overview of what that course consists of, and then maybe share an example or two of how you're going to create valuable learning experiences for students who are taking your course. Right. Um, I just wanted to add to something that, yes, of course, like the, the relationships I've made have, you know, stuck with me. They've actually helped me in my academic, my personal life as well. Um, and so teaching it or coming back here as a teacher now, I obviously relate a lot to the students, maybe a little more still because I'm still very fresh into teaching. Um, so I'm definitely trying to make, you know, how I enjoyed learning was through haptic or hands-on learning, which is what I'm trying to do with my students. So um, coming back to historical archaeology, which I'm teaching online, um, arche historical archaeology has many definitions, but the one I like to say is that historical archaeologists focus on the period post-written records. Um, post the introduction of written records, right? This could be in different periods in different societies. So for example, in Mesoamerica and places like Egypt, Mesopotamia, that happened much early on than places in some places in the New World where written records was introduced a little bit later on. In the Americas, it's usually considered post-European um, contact. Um, 
which is what we focus on in historical archaeology. So historical archaeology in that case, in the way we look at it, focuses on um, looking at textual records, written records, historical records, but not just that, um, not, you know, depending on just the textual records, but using anthropological methodology, archaeological methodology um, to kind of relate the historical records to events, to explore events um, along with written records. So with historical archaeology, the way I learned it, and I enjoyed it thoroughly, um, we looked at a lot of everyday objects that you would not think were part of history, wouldn't think as historical archaeology. For example, a Coca-Cola bottle, right? Um, uh, a Pond's cream uh, bottle. Um, these are some things that I've actually found in the field as well, in Japantown, in, down, in San Jose. Um, so you wouldn't look at that as history um, or as, you know, particular because you have this notion that archaeology is prehistory. It's, you know, really old things. Um, but when you look at these everyday objects, um, you can actually see the changes that these everyday objects had in society, in economy, in life, right? Um, those objects become really important in historical archaeology because, um, for example, if I say the Coca-Cola bottle, that structurally um, and aesthetically has changed so much through the years. And we can track that change in a Coca-Cola bottle, for example, because it usually has the manufacturing date printed on it or you know, carved on it or engraved on it. So um, the stuff that I enjoyed the most was when I was studying it was, you know, our professors just encourage us to look at everyday objects and kind of research how um, how they transform to what they look like now and what came before that. And with that, you can see, for example, if I find a pond's cream, it would give me an idea of the period um, of that site, right? Um, was it used in the 1900s? Was it used earlier? Um, the kind of kinds of commodities that they had, right? Um, were they traded? Were they produced there? Was it manufactured there? Um, was it limited to a neighborhood? Did they, you know, export it to bigger areas, to bigger cities? So looking at those objects, so simple objects that you would overlook in your daily life um, can give you so much information about societies, about cultures. So I really think historical archaeology in that sense is super important. I encourage my students to, you know, be curious in that, like in a simple object, a box, for example, um, or an older box, a sewing kit that you find in your grandparents' house, to research it, to look into it, to see how it came to be what it was and what it, you know, how it, what it meant to the people that produced it, what it meant to the people that consumed it, how it shaped the culture, the economy of that thing. So yeah, historical archaeology, that is how I would, my take on historical archaeology is, that's what I would encourage in the classroom. Awesome. That sounds really cool and really interesting. Yeah. I, I think you did a great job of just highlighting how, you know, if, if you hear a term like historical archaeology, and again, you know, the, the, uh, maybe the diff, you know, connotations that come to mind are like thinking about things that are like really old or, you know, not maybe, you know, current or, um, yeah. or relevant, but, uh, you know, I really like the example that you used of like the Coca-Cola bottle and just thinking about how everything has a history to it, right. And, and having kind of the, the curiosity or the inquiry to dig deeper, do some research and, and really learn more about it. And also think about to your, like what you highlighted, how those things also intersect with these other dimensions, right? What does that mean in terms of like the social context or the economic context or the political context? Um, and, you know, you, you led off with this, we're really talking about how this creates a, a really, um, you know, hands-on or kind of applied learning experience, I think is really cool. Um, Cause again, you know, as people think about uh, maybe completing their degree online, you know, some assumptions that people may have is that, oh, it's maybe not as hands-on yeah, as it would be if I were, you know, going through an in-person program. But I think the example you highlighted actually shows that it, it can be really hands-on. It's, yeah, it can be very hands-on. You don't have to go far to look at these objects, right? They're in your home. They're in your daily consumption. Um, we have the internet now. Um, I think a lot of us did a lot of reverse image searches on Google and try to like find history of things, which is you know, it's, it's convenient. You can sit at your home, get your entire degree, and you don't have to go too far to look That's for true. Art. Yeah. I mean, just the information we have access to now is just so abundant. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it makes it easy to, to be able to access it yeah. from anywhere. All you need is the internet most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, to transition yeah. into our final yeah. question for today, um, you mentioned initially after you completed your graduate degree, you, you've also been a field archaeologist. And I was wondering if you can describe, knowing that you've kind of gone through this um, trajectory, of what you studied and then what you were doing uh, post grad school and now getting into teaching, how 
uh, or maybe describe like the different types of transferable skills and experiences that you've developed um, as you're studying anthropology and some of the things that our students could expect to develop as they're going through the anthropology program. Okay, yeah, so anthropology in its most general sense, you would describe it as a study of humanity, right? Um, and what we study is past human cultures, which with, with archeology, span with cultural anthropology, we study you know, contemporary human cultures as well. So you learn about humans, you learn why they, made the things they did, why they, um, you know, had certain behaviors. Um, so I think there is a lot of transferability. You can, I know a lot of my, um, you know, su uh, alumni that, you know, graduated with me um, went into UX research because um, you're, you can understand user, user behavior and you can apply that to maybe technology. Um, I went into field work. Uh, I really enjoyed it because I, enjoy past societies, I enjoy learning about past societies, the prehistory, history, all of that. Um, what we learned in the classroom, your archaeology theory obviously is super important, your anthropological theory is super important, um, and methodology is super important, but you can actually only truly, truly learn it when you are experiencing it in the field. Um, my first field school was actually with Dr. Menichetti, of the anthropology department in St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, and then I went on to do another field school in Peru, which was more of a bioarchaeological field school. And that's where I really was able to sharpen my skills in what I learned in the classroom, you know, sharpen um, excavation methodology. You know, you have to be very, very particular, go very slowly, be very delicate because you are handling old artifacts. Um, you know, archaeological methodology, archaeological analysis of artifacts of the uh, remains that you find, right? They may be artifactual, they may be material, they may even sometimes be human remains. Um, but and being in the field, having what you learned in the classroom translate what you're doing in the field is so important. It teaches you sensitivity, right? Because you are at the end working with someone's um, ancestors. Um, you have to treat it with respect. Um, same goes for even artifacts, I believe. You have to treat that with respect because it, it, there are living de descendants. And um, I think anthropology, when you're studying human behavior, that teaches you a lot of sensi sensitivity as well, um, not only in terms of what you are excavating, but also the, the, and the descendants of the people that you are interacting with, right? Um, so there is a lot of transferability um, and you can sharpen all your skills once you are in the field because that is when you are able to get hands-on experience in doing exactly what you were taught in the classroom. But, you know, we were taught so well in the classroom that that transition really happened very seamlessly. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it just sounds like so versatile in terms of uh, having this really good foundation, right. In terms of like studying um, like the research, the theory, the methodologies, like you were saying, uh, but then thinking about how you can take those other skills that you're developing, the critical thinking skills, the sensitivity, the empathy, uh, the ability to relate and understand, and then be able to apply those to so many different uh, paths that one might want to go down, uh, whether it is thinking about, you know, more the technological side or the fieldwork side or teaching or, you know, any other, uh, you know, industry where you're working with people, which is every single industry that's out there pretty much. <laughs> so awesome. Well, thanks for shining a spotlight on those. And just thank you overall for just sharing your insights with us and the value of SJSU online. And thank you as always to our viewers for watching. Please yeah. comment on this video. If you have any uh, questions or comments for us, you can always go to our SJSU online website for more information and get in contact with our enrollment counselors. And we'll catch you in the next live stream. Thanks, y'all.